Mahmoud Darwish, the picture of the man you see before you, was a Palestinian poet and author who commanded the Arab and international world with his poetry. In one of his more famous poems, he wrote, Sajjal, ana Arabi, wa rakam bataqti khamsuna alfan. Record, I am an Arab, and my identity card number is 50,000. Hello, everyone. My name is Suzanne Nasser, and I am an Arab, and I am a Muslim. I think one of the biggest mistakes we can make, regardless of who we are or where we come from, is to lose sight of our identity. It is our identity that gives us meaning in life. It gives us a sense of character. And because I am thousands and thousands of miles away from my homeland, my place of birth, I make a conscientious effort to preserve my heritage. And although I am loud and proud of who I am as an Arab, I am also loud and proud of who I am as an Arab American. You see, I am both an Arab and an American, all day, every day. I'm composed of these two halves, and although at times there is a pool between these halves, it is these two distinct identities, Arab and American, that make me whole. I don't think that I have to live in an either-or world, and I appreciate being able to be fluid in my identity. I must admit how I identify as both an Arab and an American, the steps I take to negotiate these two identities, can at times be a little complicated. However, I am fortunate enough to be an American and live in a country that affords me the opportunity to preserve my heritage in a fashion that makes most sense to me. I was also fortunate enough to be raised by two loving, smart, and open-minded parents who understood the value of blending both worlds for their children. My parents raised me and my siblings in a fashion that allowed us to really embrace our mixed identities. Because of the way I look, People don't assume that I am an Arab. People don't assume that I am Muslim. They usually misidentify me as Italian, Greek, Spanish, and a lot of other different ethnicities that don't really belong to me. I am assumed to be everything but Arab. And sometimes I wonder if they think that guessing Arab would be insulting. And I get it. My world is different. So what is the world I come from like? And who are Arab Americans? When people ask me where I'm from, I usually respond with, do you mean where I'm from from or where I'm from? Because where I'm from from is Palestine, and that is never anything I want to lose sight of. And where I'm from is Orland Park, Illinois. So I take great joy in being here with all of you today to talk about who I am as an Arab American. It gives me the opportunity to break through the images of people have of what an Arab should look like, talk like, and behave like. If you were to close your eyes right now and think about the images that may come to your mind when you hear the word Arab, I bet a lot of different images conjure up in your mind. And if you were now to take it one step further, and think about how some of those images may interfere with your ability to relate with a peer in your classroom if you are a student. If you are an instructor with a student you teach, or if you are a responding officer with a situation that you are asked to remedy. So let's talk a little bit about who are Arab Americans. These are the 22 countries that embody the Arab world. And the fact that all 22 countries claim Arabic as their national language really is the one unifying factor. It's important for us to keep in mind that the Arab students we interact with in and out of the classroom are just as diverse as the, as the countries they come from. The Arab students you see here on campus have cultural differences. They may have some shared sense of history. And they are pretty diverse in appearance. Arabs may have white, olive, or dark skin, blue or brown eyes, and hair texture may differ.
The majority of Arab Americans, and please keep in mind, I'm talking about Americans of Arab descent that live here in the United States, okay? And this may come a little bit as a shock to you, but the majority of, to some of you, the majority of Arab Americans are actually Christian, 77%, and the remaining 23% are Muslim. Here in the U.S., there are 7 million Muslims, and the majority of these Muslims are African American. Arab Americans value education. 45% of Americans of Arab descent have a bachelor's degree or higher, compared to 27% of Americans at large. 18% of Arab Americans have a postgraduate degree, which is nearly twice the American average of 10%. Arab Americans live in all 50 states, and about 94% live in metropolitan areas. Detroit, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Northeastern New Jersey are the top six metro areas of Arab American concentration. Arab Americans' accomplishments are as diverse as the community itself. Because of the diversity of Arab Americans, and since we don't have any one distinct appearance, you actually know many more Arab Americans than you think you do. I wonder if you knew any of these famous Americans had an Arab heritage. So as you can see from this list, Arab Americans have distinguished themselves in science and medicine, academia and sports, the arts and politics, in every aspect of American life. We have been here for generation, generations. We have built communities. We have educated ourselves and started successful companies. We work hard and we love football. We watch Housewives of New Jersey and we dance to the music of Shakira. We have put up mosques and churches in every state. I don't know about Alaska and Hawaii, but I'm assuming. We, we might celebrate Ramadan, but we celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas too. And we can be found in every corner of this country. So now that I've familiarized you with some well-known Americans of Arab heritage, let me introduce you to a more common Arab family. A day before they were to return to the United States from their visit to Palestine, my parents, Samia and Aiz, gave birth to me in Elbira, Palestine. You see, my parents were told that my due date was November. I came in September. <laughs> so either I had plans of my own or my parents were misinformed of my due date. I'd like to believe that my birth wasn't really accidental, but that it was purposeful in helping to shape who I am today. Being born in Palestine and spending the first few months of my life as an infant there is my direct connection to that world. It put an imprint on my psyche, and it is that bold, brighter strand of my fabric. My accidental birth, the biannual visits to, to Palestine that followed, and the influences of my parents, who were strong community service leaders in the Arab American community, were all factors that continued to lay the ground for the person you see today. How I maintain my ethnic identity, how I weave in and out of the Arab and American in me, is attributed to the courage, honesty, and intelligence of my parents. They did things that begged us to preserve our heritage. They spoke to us in Arabic. We celebrated Islamic holidays. We cooked those delicious traditional meals, visited Palestine almost every other summer, and were active members of the Arab American Community Center, which provided a safe haven for us from a world that at times was hostile towards Arab Americans. Most years we attended the Albira conventions. Now if you recall, Albira is my birthplace and the hometown of my parents. And each year a convention was held in which thousands of Albira descendants who live in America attend. It's sort of like a big family reunion. In addition to maintaining and reclaiming our ethnic identity, my parents also understood that in order for us to progress as individuals, they needed to find a way to infuse the richness, beauty, and the power of being an American. And they did this by ensuring that we received a solid education. They did things that might have been a little bit outside of their comfort zone, like allowing me to go to homecoming. They gave me their blessings to go away to school and to travel to Europe with my friends. 
These were things that were a little foreign to them, but oftentimes seen as a rite of passage for Americans. My parents also taught us to exercise our constitutional rights as Americans. And what's more American than speaking up against injustices happening around the world? So what you are seeing here are a couple of pictures of a peaceful rally that took place when I was in grad school at the University of Michigan. And what we are doing here is standing symbolically with the people of Palestine and depicting the plight of Palestinians living under Israeli occupation and who are struggling for their freedom from an oppressive regime. But it really didn't start there for me. My first experience of exercising my constitutional rights, my constitutional right of freedom of speech, came at the very young age of five. We were celebrating my fifth birthday on a beautiful fall afternoon in our backyard with family and friends from the neighborhood. I remember we were riding our bikes, taking turns on the swing set and slide, tap dancing on the top of our picnic table, when all of a sudden, my birthday celebration came to an abrupt halt. One of the neighborhood kids, who slipped away from the party to go home and get his bike, came back with some unsettling news. He said, Gelto, my mom told me to tell you to turn on the news right now. And in that moment, the tippity tap dancing, bike riding, and laughter that filled the air came to a halt and was replaced by salty tears and a deafening silence, save for the reports on the news of a massacre that slaughtered several thousand Palestinian women and children living in a refugee camp in Lebanon. It was only a few short days after this gruesome assault, perpetrated by the Israeli army and its allied criminal militia, that I had a taste of what it means to be both an Arab and an American. A few short days later, and at the very young age of five, we were out in the streets of Chicago protesting this assault. Despite being raised in a strong Arab ethnic home and the one that was also infused with mainstream American values, there obviously are times when being both an Arab and an American causes me pain and brings me joy. Being Arab follows us wherever we go and whatever we do. Being Arab is relentless. Racism and media misrepresentations are things we are used to. So how do I keep the dignity of that side of me considering the assault on my people? I'm a stranger here and a foreigner there. I'm not fully accepted in the States, nor do I completely fit in when I go back home to Palestine. And it's never really about fitting in. It's about navigating. And what are the politics of relation here? You see, I will never forget that dreadful day when the no news broke about the two planes that crashed into the Twin Towers. I'll never forget that feeling of wanting to be invisible. I was in grad school at the time, studying to be a social worker, learning about social justice, and one of the more prestigious universities in the country for social work, the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. A student came in during our class break and frantically announced, that the Arabs crashed some planes into some buildings in New York. Her words, my feelings, still echo in my mind until this very day. I remember going through the motions of my day in a foggy state, trying to keep a low profile. And even though none of my instructors in any of my other classes that day brought up the incident, I remember feeling as though everyone was staring right at me. I finally had the opportunity to call home. Dad answered. And I said, Baba, what's going on? I'm watching the news, and I just don't understand. What's happening? Why? And he said, we miss you, Habibti. Your mom's making your favorite dish, and we wish you were here with us. Yeah, OK, Dad. That's great, but I'm, I'm confused. I'm scared. And he said, when do you think you'll come home to visit us? And finally, 
I got it. My father, he was too afraid to say anything. My father, the one I admire and look up to. My father, who mentored new immigrant families to this country. The one who helped raise scholarship funds for Palestinian youth to attend college in the occupied territories. The one who led discussions and workshops on the politics of the Middle East. My father, well, he was too afraid to say anything. So why can't we feel comfortable in our own skin? Because right after 9-11, George W. Bush told all Americans, either you are with us or you're with the terrorists. This quote has been equated by some to mean that if you are an Arab, you are a terrorist. There is nothing more that scares our community than being seen as unpatriotic. That's why we sing the Star Spangled Banner at every one of our events. That's why we were the first ones to raise American flags after 9-11. With this statement, Arab Americans were basically asked to prove their patriotism, which is unfair because our roots in this country run deep. So this depiction of us being un-American is inaccurate. The history just doesn't fit. Are there times when some of us find ourselves being somewhere in between the Arab and the American in us? Yes, there may be times when some of us find ourselves somewhere in between. And we, not, and we have not quite learned how to tell everyone that. So does being somewhere in between mean a departure from the hyphenated nation we live in? African-American, Asian-American, Mexican-American, Arab-American? Or is it the ability to combine two different worlds, ideas, and selfhoods? I think somewhere in between means being fluid in our identity. I think being somewhere in between means maintaining and reclaiming what's important to you. I think being somewhere in between means preserving your heritage, but creating something new but true to its original parts. And so this here is a part of that preservation. This here is a picture of my daughter Yara with her sito, her grandma, learning how to make katayif, a pancake-like pastry stuffed with nuts or cream that is traditionally prepared and served during the Islamic month of Ramadan. This here is another part of that preservation. Again, that's my daughter Yara showing off the traditional Palestinian embroidered dress, and she had the opportunity to walk the stage right here at Moraine Valley um, during the Taste of Moraine's uh, diversity fashion show to show off the Palestinian traditional dress wear. And so now, I'd like to leave you with a verse from another poem written by the famous Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. This poem, for me, sums up that in-between place. It sums up the complexities of trying to negotiate the Arab and American in me. And as, so, as Mahmoud Darwish so eloquently wrote, I am from there, I am from here. I am not there and I am not here. I have two names which meet in part, and I have two languages. I forget which of them I dream in. Thank you.